Good day chaps. So today's video is going to be on the Vickers Medium Cruiser Tank Mark 1. A light to medium cruiser tank designed for export by Vickers that ran parallel to the FV300 project, but due to faulty information over the years is often mistaken as the FV301 light tank. However the vehicle itself is quite interesting. The work on the Medium Cruiser Mark 1 began in 1954 for a French speaking nation, although which exactly was not recorded. It was marginally heavier and longer than the FV300, and it's likely Vickers would have dipped into the former's budget to produce this export tank. While clearly not up to date with other western vehicles of the time, such as Centurion, this would have more than likely have been down to the requirement specifications than any direct negligence on the behalf of Vickers. The layout is fairly conventional, a four man crew with the driver to the front and the others in the turret and the engine to the rear. The hull has a well-angled front plate of 44.5mm angled back at 36 degrees for 75mm effective front armour, with the rest of the hull being around 19mm side and back. The driver is located to the front right hand side, which might be a clue as to who the owners could have been, as generally tanks with a right hand drive operate on the left hand side, and narrowing it down to a left hand drive nation that speaks French could be a solution. The driver has three periscopes with good fields of view and a large hatch that pops up and to the right. The driver's controls were standard for the time with pedals forward, gears between his knees and tillers to either side of his legs. To his left was a surplus ammunition and behind him a transverse bulkhead with an opening for escape if his hatch was stuck. The power was provided by a Rolls-Royce Meteorite Mark II, a cut down meteor engine with four cylinders delivering 530 brake horsepower for 48 kilometers an hour. This was coupled to a V52 gearbox to the rear final drive sprockets. The FV300 series had a TN10 gearbox, but this was still classified as it was being developed for the Chieftain tank at the time. The engine was air-cooled with twin fans drawing air from the front louvers, blowing it over the engine and sump tanks and back out over the rear louvers. The main difference between the Vickers Cruiser and the FV300 series is the suspension and this is the main way of quickly separating the two. The Vickers tank had five smaller rubber rimmed road wheels of 28 inches each with distinct holes punched into them and three return rollers, one fore and two aft over the fourth wheel. The FV300 series including all wooden mock-ups such as the FV301, the FV303 tank destroyer and the FV302 GPO vehicle all have five larger wheels closer together each with five distinct heavy bolts and no holes with only two return rollers on each side. Both have shock absorbers of a Newton Bennett type but are located on different points and both use torsion bar suspension. The FV300 suspension finally ended up on the contentious tank test bed where they remain today. The turret itself is similar to the FV300 but not as refined, being of a cruder or welded steel type with five sides. The commander sat on the right with a gunner in front of him. A 360 degree cupola with periscopes was provided for the commander and a single periscope for the gunner. The loader sat opposite them with his own hatch but no periscope. Comparatively, the FV301 light tank had a single cupola mounted to the centre of the turret but did include scopes for both the gunner and the loader including a reflector cum periscope which was not included in the Vickers vehicle as that too was classified at the time. The turret arm was also only about 51mm thick. The main gun remained the same, being a 77mm gun as fitted to the Comet, able to fire armour piercing capped ballistic cap rounds, able to perforate 120mm at 1000 yards. The FE300 had a modified version of this gun made by Ellswick with an autoloader fitted. It's not recorded if such a weapon would have been fitted to the Vickers cruiser, but it's quite unlikely. Secondary armament came in the form of a 7.92mm Beezer machine gun mounted coaxially with 5,750 rounds of ammunition. The turret was fully electric for 360 degrees of traverse and the gun's depression was about 8 degrees. One full-size mock-up and several plans were drawn up for the Vickers medium cruiser and then the project went cold and its fate not recorded. Exactly who ordered it is still a mystery as well. One would suspect India 
due to the driver's position and the fact they desired a vehicle fitting this role, which led to the VAPT and then the Vickers MBT Mark I. However, the brass plaque attached to the front could be in Arabic, with Lebanon as a possible customer, due to the French-speaking parts and the plans. This will remain conjecture until further information can be found on these elusive vehicles. Sadly, this vehicle comes up time and time again as the FV300. But oddly, this is down to poor research and then propagated through the internet and various books based on that have further marred the truth. This is circular sourcing and it's one of the gravest errors you can make. If in doubt, find those original source documents. Only very recently has it again cropped up in World of Tanks Blitz as the FV301, which is particularly annoying as they had both sets of plans and were just too damn lazy to get it right. Well guys, I hope you liked that. The full dimensions are listed below. If you like this or want more odd tanks, let me know, like, subscribe and hit that little bell thing and give us a share. And until next time, toodle pip.